Look at you, leveling up from a single Ubuntu server VM to a full-fledged home lab that would have even the nerd stuff in here into a locker. Now, you can't have all these services and not have a nice organized dashboard to access all them. I mean, you can, I'm not your dad or anything, or am I? Today, we're gonna to take a look at some of the most popular self-hosted dashboards that make it super easy to display and access all your home lab goodies and treats. The four we're gonna be taking a look at today are Heimdall, Homer, Omar, and Dashy. Yes, I know, your mom's, dog's, boyfriend's mailman has a GitHub with the best dashboard app ever. I know. If I'm leaving out your favorite app, then let me know how much of a silly goose I am down in the comments. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over each of the four I chose and discuss how to get them set up, what features each of them provides, what I like about them and what I don't. At the end, I'll tell you which one I decided to go with in my home lab setup. All right, first one we're gonna start with is probably the one I've seen the most and that's Heimdall. Fun fact, Heimdall is a god from Norse mythology who was the watchman at the gates of Asgard. So I can see where the name came from. My Plex VM and Pi Hole container are pretty much Asgard. So yeah, it makes sense. So Heimdall is actually the first dashboard app that I ever tried and kind of stuck with it for a long time. It's very easy to get installed as it can be spun up inside of a Docker container with no pre-configured files necessary. Once it's up and running, you can begin adding all of your services to the home page dynamically from the GUI. I'll be specifying this for each app as I think it's the most important aspect being whether the dashboard entries are added dynamically via the GUI or statically from a pre-configured file. Now, since we're adding entries from the GUI, let's talk about the GUI. The GUI itself is a clean single page app that's not super inviting, but not overwhelming. You're free to add some personality by changing the background to your image of choice or go with the stock option. In terms of features, there's not really too much here. Heimdall is really designed to be clean and simple. To add an item, you'll have to go over to the menu on the right and click the unmarked list button with no pop-up text. See a list of your items, then click add at the top. Not super intuitive. Once in the add menu, you can give your application a name, then specify a type which will do a few things. One, it'll load the icon for the app if it exists, it'll set a color for the tile, and if an API exists for that app, then you'll be able to enter your credentials to retrieve stats and put them directly inside the tile. Once added, it appears as a little tile on your dashboard that you can click and navigate directly to your app. Neat. At the very least, this is what each of these dashboard applications is designed to give you. Some of them go above and beyond that though with extra features. You can see on my dashboard that I have quite a few apps displaying some useful info. Unfortunately, that's about it when it comes to cool features within Heimdall. Sure, you can change the tile colors, assign custom icons, and tie into APIs, but one feature that is really missing is a good grouping mechanism. You can assign tags to items and then create a tag tile, which will filter down to those specific items, but I really hate this implementation and other apps accomplish this so much better. So overall rating for Heimdall, Thor out of 10. Moving on to our next app, we have Homer another open source app that you can easily install via Docker. However, Homer is different in that it's a static app. This means that you'll have to change a config file containing all the information for your page, including names, groups, APIs, icons, etc. Then you'll have to pass the location of those files into your Docker container via binding mount or whatever fancy pants technique you want to use. If you're a true nerd, you can build everything into a Docker image and deploy it that way. Now this could be a positive or negative thing depending on your environment. It is cool that you can host your entire config in GitHub or something and then easily deploy that same setup anywhere, but then you could just easily say, why would I need to deploy this in multiple places? It's designed to be a custom solution for your home lab. Whatever, moving on. Once you have the app up and running, you're greeted with another clean interface. I really like the design of Homer. You can easily toggle between different color schemes that are customizable via your config file. You can toggle between row versus column layouts. You can easily search for tiles based on tags, keywords, and name. And you probably noticed that your tiles are broken down into groups. Thank you, 
This is just an aesthetically pleasing page that I think is much more enjoyable to use than Heimdall. However, it's not perfect. If you're wondering why I haven't shown how to add items in the GUI, it's because you can't. Remember, this is a static site and all changes are made by modifying the config file. Luckily, the documentation is pretty good and depending on your environment, you can just update the file directly or modify it on your personal machine and SCP it over or something like that. Another thing is that I don't think it does API integrations as well as Heimdall. You can see I have the Sonar API enabled and all you get there are just two numbers with no text or anything. So cool, I guess. Like I said, I really like using Homer once it's deployed, but the static nature of it isn't really my jam. Maybe it's yours, but we don't have to like the same things. We aren't the same person. Or are we? Okay, overall rating for Homer, I'm gonna have to give it a dull out of 10. All right, moving on to dashboard number three. And you know what they say about the number three. They say it's... Okay, the next dashboard is Homer. Holy shit, bro, you, you just did Homer. What, what are you doing it again? No. This is Homer with the trademark ARR at the end. So naturally it plays pretty well with the ARR stack or R stack. More on that in a bit. Now Homer isn't static or dynamic in its setup. It's both. Again, open source, easily deployed with Docker, but now we have the choice if we'd like to use a pre-configured file with our setup or just handle everything dynamically via the GUI. Also, once you've made changes in the GUI, you can export your config if you wanna keep a backup somewhere. This is already showing features our previous two didn't, but what is it like to use Homer? Well, I wanted to love it and I still kinda do, but there are some quirks. Immediately, you'll see a layout that is very reminiscent of its similarly named cousin. The layout is clean, the animations are nice, there are clearly defined groups, and there is a search feature. But things just kind of feel off. Creating an app is easy enough. Just click on the icon at the top right, give it a name, preferably start with the name of the app so that it'll load any default values it has. Then you can change it to whatever you like. Go ahead and add the other information, which is pretty straightforward. Not really sure why there's a service URL and an on-click URL. I guess if an app has a URL for an API, but a different URL for the GUI. I don't really know of any apps that do that, but I guess there may be some if this has that feature. If there's an API connection available, you can add your info to get some really cool functionality. Once added, your tiles will pop up on the page in the group you've assigned them to. I originally saw that you can move tiles around, but I couldn't figure it out as just clicking them opens the link or does nothing. Turns out you have to double click inside the box and then drag it around, but the animation is a little wonky. Overall, it's a solid dashboard experience, although don't give your service too long of a name or it'll eat into the hamburger menu. Now, let's talk about the coolest part of Homer. It's app integrations, especially with the R stack. Going into the settings menu will give you access to add these widget-esque features. There's some basic things like weather, Google search, calendar, which aren't super useful, but hey, your, your mother and I, we're, we're proud of you. The cool part is when you toggle something like Overseer. Once I've toggled that and added the tile connected to the Overseer API, I'll be able to search and request TV shows and movies directly from the dashboard. That is a freaking awesome feature. I do wish there were more useful tool tips when you hovered over this, like, hey, type exclamation point OS into the search bar if you wanna search for movies and stuff. I actually had to read documentation to figure that out, but holy crap, is that cool. Also, if you've turned on sonar, then it'll show on your calendar when your shows are airing with some information about them. Now, ad blocking does kind of mess up showing the thumbnail or poster image, but I'm okay with that. Oh, and did you notice the green or red dots on the tiles? That's because we are pinging the service to see if we get a response back to tell us if it's even up. I mean, these are some actual use for features and make Homer a serious contender. I think if they clean up some of the visual and functional bugs and maybe make the widget integration a bit more user friendly, then we have ourselves a serious contender. As it sits today, I'm going to give Homer a Captain Jack Sparrow out of 10. 
Okay, our final app. I originally wasn't going to do this one, but when I created a YouTube poll and you guys told me to include Dashi or you'd eat my firstborn, and I decided, okay, I'm gonna include Dashi. Now I didn't have high expectations because I didn't really hear too much about Dashi before, but holy crap, the creator put in some serious work into this app and she, along with all the contributors, must be applauded. Bravo. Dashi is similar to Homer. God, I, I hate saying it like that, but of course one's named Homer and the other one's named Homer, but with the R's, so I have to say it like that. Dashi is similar to Homer in that it can be spun up with a static config file or configured dynamically in the GUI. Not only can you just add tiles to the page though, it straight up has like a page editor where you can add sections, change titles, and even play with different color schemes. I'll be honest, the general vibe of Dashi is a little overwhelming and intense for me, but it is jammed packed with features. Honestly, I could do an entire video on Dashi. There's really that much here, but for the sake of this video, let's just touch on the important aspects. The GUI can be easily modified by toggling the built-in themes or by setting custom colors. You can change how the tiles are presented, add custom CSS, and add navigation buttons. Most everything can be added through the interactive editor, but if you want to edit the config file, you can do that also through the GUI. And you can also do this in tree mode or in code mode. Now here's a really cool feature. You can back up your config file to the cloud and restore it to any other Dashi setup. I guess the creators have some sort of cloud storage budget they're using for this, which is a fantastic feature and just shows how much the devs actually care about this app. In terms of features for your tiles, there are a few like health checks and hotkey app launching, but for the most part, there isn't API integration like the others. However, there are some very impressive widgets you can configure or create. I'm not gonna go into this as it requires a bit more configuration, but I'll show some from the documentation as I'm talking about this so that you can get a feel of what's possible with Dashi. Again, this app could be a whole video, and honestly, if that's something you guys wanna see, then just yell at me in the comments and maybe I'll give you the business. In terms of features, Dashi blows everything out of the water, but I could definitely see how it could be a bit overwhelming for users that are just looking for a simple dashboard. And for this reason, I'm giving Dashi a bowl of ramen out of 10. So those are all of the dashboard apps I wanted to cover today. All of them had their pros and cons, and honestly, none of them were bad, so I wouldn't have a problem recommending any of these. However, I did say that I'd tell you guys which one I'm actually using in my home lab. So the app I'm using is the Favorites Bar in Chrome. Just kidding, I'm using Homer. Surprised? Yeah, I kinda was too. I wouldn't say that Homer is objectively the best app we looked at today, but it worked best for me. Let me explain. The big thing for me with a dashboard app wasn't really all the bells and whistles. The important aspect for me was that it was aesthetically pleasing, had solid grouping and searching, and it let me easily deploy it. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. I wish it was dynamic and let me add items through the GUI and status indicators would be a nice feature, but for me, it works. I could definitely see myself switching to Home R in the near future once some of the bugs are ironed out and Heimdall could get another look if they'd add decent grouping and searching functionality. Dashi is still the most impressive, but for my somewhat small lab, it just seems like too much. For huge setups and teams though, Dashi is probably the way to go. But yeah, I'm a Homer boy for now, at least at the time of making this video. Who knows, I could be on some other bullshit tomorrow. You guys know how that goes. Anyway, that's all I really have to say. Let me know down in the comments which dashboard app you guys are using or if you plan to use any of the ones that I showed off today. If you liked the video, be sure to drop a like. And if you like seeing me in a rectangle box on your electronic device, then please consider subscribing. I'd like to give a huge shout out to my Patreons and YouTube members. You guys are my dashboard app and you're all so aesthetically pleasing. But that's it for today. If you're still here, then I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.